Everybody ready? All righty. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Oviedo City Council budget hearing and meeting. It is Thursday, September 5th, 6.30 p.m. We have all members of council present. At this time, if we can all rise, and Councilwoman, would you lead us in the pledge? Councilwoman, now the Star Spangled Banner, please. <laughs> no, you wouldn't like that. Chief, invocation. This is your Good evening. Good evening, Chief. How are you tonight? Very good. How's Mom feeling before you start? Doing very well, thank you. Thank you for asking. I don't think we reconvene prior to the anniversary of September 11th. We did bring the uh, September 11th memorial for everyone to purview and enjoy and so forth. Uh, just a reminder, um, over 2,900 victims lost their life on that tragic day in 2001. Impacted over 70 nationalities. Um, 2,753 victims at the World Trade Center, 184 from the Pentagon, uh, and 40 victims of Shanksville, uh, Pennsylvania crash. So a lot of families and friends and co-workers and so forth, very negatively impacted from that day's event. But uh, we were graciously awarded a piece of metal from one of the World Trade Center beams and, and put it proudly on display. So we thought we'd bring it tonight. Thank you for sharing, Chief. If you care to join me in a word of prayer. Father God, we're reminded of the delicacy of our lives as September 11th approaches. Lord, we ask as we do each year, your comfort for those families, those, the victims, the survivors, the families, the friends, the co-workers, all those that were touched that tragic day. Ask for your protection that that would not occur again. And Give us the wisdom and know how to discover these things quickly and, and circumvent these type of, of tragedies. Lord, we pray for our council and the issues before them tonight. We pray for all our families that have returned and our children back in school, that you would protect them this school year and offer many blessings on our community. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chief. We have no uh, cer ceremonial items and, or presentations, <clears throat> so we're going to move right into the budget hearing, which is resolution number 2721-13. Mr. Cobb? Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> and Mr. Thanks. Cobb, before you go any further, I do need to embarrass you a little bit. Happy birthday to you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. This is a request for a city council to you conduct the first of two required public hearings on the proposed millage rate and the tentative FY 2013-14 budget. The budget was presented to the council during two work sessions over the summer on July 22nd and August the 26th. At each of the work sessions, I want to tell you, council, how much we appreciate the input that you gave to us and helped us through this process, and we really we took it to heart, and uh, we feel like that we've been able to address your concerns. Um, the final budget is $51,980,050 net of interfund inter transfers and internal service charges. The general <coughs> fund budget for FY 2013-14 is $23,721,858, which includes several new positions in public safety, technology, and human resources. The millage rate remained unchanged at 4.8626 mills, with the general obligation bond issue millage rate decreasing to 0.2741 mills, or a total millage rate of 5.1367 mills. It is recommended tonight that you uh, adopt the resolutions and conduct the necessary public hearings. And Ms. I would also like to recognize Ms. Hayes, Ms. Jones, and Ms. Cole, once again, for their efforts on this. 
They have done an exemplary job in putting this budget together, and they're available here tonight to address any questions. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. I will now state that the proposed millage rate of 4.8626 mills is a revenue increase of 1.86% compared to the rollback tax rate of 4.7738 mills. That being said, is there anybody in the public who would like to address council on the budget and millage rate? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing portion. And Mr. Group, could you kindly read uh, by title only, resolution number 2721-13? Yes, Mr. Mayor. A resolution establishing the millage rates to be levied for fiscal year 2013-2014 by City of Oviedo City Government, adopting the millage rates for the 2013-2014 fiscal year for the City of Oviedo at the overall rate of 5.1367 mills with 4.8626 mills for the City's operations and .2741 mills for payment on the 2003 General Obligation Bond Issue, expressing legislative and administrative findings and intent and providing for implementing administrative actions, a savings provision, conflict, severability, and an effective date. And that's the resolution by the Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Group, at this time I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt the Millage Levy Resolution number 2721-13. We can discuss and vote on it. Upon adoption, we will publicly announce that the operating millage rate is set at 4.8626 mills, which is 1.86% higher than the rollback millage rate, and combined with the GOB bond issue of 2741 mills, the overall millage rate is 5.1367. Do we have a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Councilman Schenck, any discussion? Thanks for the hard work. Very good. Very great presentation. Council? Yes, congratulations. It was very well done. Off to my left. Ditto. Ditto. I'd also like to uh, just add to that the uh, general obligation bond issue has gone down 9%. So um, that's also an excellent job by all, and I think that it will be accomplished later on on our agenda. <clears throat> all of that being said, does anybody on council have anything else? No. A motion on the table is to adopt. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Mr. Groot, can you now read the title of the budget resolution, number 2722-13? Yes, Mr. Mayor. A resolution adopting the City of Oviedo's annual operating budget for the 2013-2014 fiscal year beginning October 1, 2013 and ending September 30, 2014, expressing legislative and administrative findings and intent and providing for implementing administrative actions, a savings provision, conflict, severability, and an effective date. That's the resolution by title, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Groot. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt resolution number 2722-13, adopting the fiscal year 2013-2014 annual budget of $51,980,000. Uh, $51,980,000. Excuse me, which is net of interfund transfers and internal service charges. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. <coughs> Councilman Schenck, you have the floor. I think so. You're good? Mm -hmm. Councilman Britton? We're in good shape. Let's, Excellent. Uh, let's go. Councilwoman? Good. Deputy Mayor? Great job, everybody. And ditto for myself. <coughs> it was uh, a well thought out, well laid out process with all the options given to us, which uh, we do certainly appreciate from everyone. Anything else from council? With all that being said, the motion on the table is to adopt resolution 2722-13, which is the annual budget. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 
Mayor, if I could ask one of them, one other motion from the City Council. Yes, sir. Could you please do a motion to schedule the second public hearing for September the 16th, 2013? Certainly. Did I miss that, or is that just not here? Uh, no, sir. It's, it's just uh, you didn't miss anything. Okay. Do I have, uh, Mr. Groot, when I state the motion, do I state it for both resolutions, just like we, for the second reading? That'd be fine. I'd like to entertain a motion to schedule the second public hearing for resolutions number 2721-13 and 2722-13 for September 16th, I believe it is, correct, Mr. Cobb? Yes, sir. September 16th, 2013, here in the Oviedo City Council Chambers at approximately 6.30 p.m., held at Oviedo City Hall, 400 Alexandria Boulevard, Oviedo, Florida, 32765. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Barbara, you figure that one out. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Hearing none, call the vote. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving along, we're up to item number three, which is the approval of the minutes for August 19th, 2013, our regular session. What is pleasure of council? Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the minutes of August 19th, 2013. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Councilman Schenck? No, sir. Councilwoman? No. Nope. My left? No. Good. All those in favor of the motion to adopt the minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to our consent agenda, items five, six, and seven. What is the pleasure of council? Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Make a motion to approve as presented. Mm -hmm. Second. Good. We have a motion and a second. Was that you, Councilman mm -hmm. Britton? Deputy Mayor, any questions? No, nope, looks good. Councilman Britton? Good. Councilman? Councilman Shank. Get another dog. We're getting another dog. Uh, Chief, have fun with your new dog. <laughs> another dog, you <laughs> think? Chief, have we found a, uh, uh, a donation yet for uh, the puppy? I had conversations with a gentleman on that. Uh, we left this on the agenda just in case that doesn't. Okay. And go if it does come go through, you'll we'll, just. It's correct. We won't we use the money. The funds. Correct. Great. Okay. Motion on the table is to adopt the consent agenda as presented. All of those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on, public hearings. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, I think we need to do a public. Uh, oh, comment. public comment. I skipped over. One of these one of these days I'll get used to this new layout. It's easy to do. Uh, in the future, no, it does. It's, it's a good thing he didn't skip over the budget. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I get focused and we just go. I do apologize. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to address council on any item, either on or not on our agenda? This is your time to do so. I can now close public comments and move on to item number eight. Item number eight is ordinance number 1573, creation of an auditor selection committee. Mr. Cobb. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a request for city council to amend the code of ordinances to allow for the creation of an auditor selection committee. The city, the city is in its last year of its contract with its external auditing firm, McDermott Davison Company. Florida statutes provide that each local government entity shall use auditor selection procedures when selecting an, <clears throat> an auditor to conduct the annual financial audit. The governing body of a municipality shall establish an audit committee. The primary purpose of the audit committee is to assist the governing body in selecting the, an auditor to conduct the annual financial audit required by Florida statutes. And the auditing committee can also serve other audit purposes as well. The ordinance number 1573 establishes the committee, establishes its purpose, and establishes the level of involvement that it will have in the development of financial statements. The committee will also have the authority by law to extend the contract for an existing audit firm without issuing a request for proposal. It's recommended that City Council read ordinance number 1573 by title only, conduct a public hearing, and adopt ordinance number 1573. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Mr. Groot, would you please read ordinance number 1573 by title only? Yes, Mr. Mayor. An Thank, you. Thank you. I'm sorry. 
an ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, creating a City of Oviedo Audit Committee to implement controlling state law, providing for legislative findings and intent, creation, providing for the committee's purpose, membership duties and meetings, <coughs> providing for savings provisions, providing for codification, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. And that's the ordinance by title, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Group. At this time, I'd like to open up the public hearing portion. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address council on ordinance number 1573? Please do so now. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to adopt ordinance number 1573. Second. We have a motion and a second. Councilman Schenck, you have the floor. We're good. Councilwoman? No, I'm good. Mm -hmm. To my left. I have Everybody? one question. Yes, sir. Mr. Cobb, um, I, I just want to clarify in the in the memo. Um, it says in, in different places that uh, ideally all members of this committee, um, well, basic understanding, but it should be members of the governing body. But yet, then again, I see in other areas that the city council is going to appoint this board. So how, how is that going to work? Because I'm conflicted in reading different things in here. Is it us? Who are the, the the board, or is it us appointing staff, which it says should uh, you know have competent understanding of financial reporting and order? Are we appointing, or are we the board? My understanding is that it will be a board appointed by the council. Okay, yeah, because it because I mean it says here all members of the audit committee should be members of the governing well, body. Maybe I can help there. Yeah, this ordinance is set up to be the most flexible that it possibly can be. The Auditor General has said that the members of the local governing body or some of them should be on the Audit Selection Committee, Audit, audit <coughs> Committee. This ordinance is set up so that you can appoint five citizens to be the committee. You can appoint less than five and the remainder of y'all to be the committee, some subset of the council, or the council can be the committee. And you can do that year to year as you deem appropriate. So this ordinance provides the ultimate amount of flexibility to accomplish that goal. Can be staff members too? If they're citizens of the city. Okay. Mm -hmm. When are we going to get that back to, to point that? I assume it will be over the next few months because we need to uh, we need to be able to get the committee put in place before the end of April. So right. we'll need to be able to do that sometime before. Yes. Okay, I just was conflicted because I, I didn't understand how it was. Okay, so it could be us, members of the community. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. He couldn't sleep last night. Did I kept me up? Kept them up. You good, sir? I'm good, thank All you. All right. Any other questions? Hearing none, the motion on the table is to adopt ordinance number 1573. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Up to uh, number nine, ordinance number 1575. Tax Abatement Program. Mr. Cobb. Thank you, Mayor. This is a request for City Council to approve a tax abatement program to complement the City's existing economic development programs. Uh, the tax abatement program was approved by the City's electors on November the 6th, 2012, through a successful referendum. Ordinance number 1575 codifies that tax abatement program authorized by the electors. The tax abatement program is part of the city's continued economic development programming aimed at creating jobs and stimulating capital investment within the city. Ordinance 1575 establishes the eligibility requirements, including required number of jobs created, targeted industries, targeted areas, salary criteria, and additional factors for consideration of, of the program. It is recommended that the city council read ordinance number 1575 by title only, conduct a public hearing, and adopt ordinance number 1575. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Mr. Groot, at this time, would you kindly read ordinance number 1575 by title only? Yes, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, establishing an exemption from certain ad valorem taxation for certain new businesses and expansions of existing businesses, providing a short title, providing for enactment authority, providing findings of fact, providing for definitions of terms, providing for establishment of economic development ad valorem tax exemption, providing for an application for an exemption, 
providing for council consideration of such applications, providing for no application fees, providing for continuing performance, providing for council revocation of exemption, providing for applicability, providing for severability, providing for a sunset date, providing an effective date. That's the ordinance by title, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Groot. Uh, seeing that this is an ordinance, I will open up the public hearing portion. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address council on ordinance number 1575? Seeing none, we are going to close the public hearing portion and move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Make a motion to adopt ordinance 1575. Second. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Deputy Mayor, you have the floor. No, nope, this is good. It's just another tool in there to make us the, you know, the best place to stop for new business and help them out with new stuff they're going to do. So it's great. John, thank you for all your hard work on that, promoting it. So off we go. Councilman? Ditto. Thanks, John. Councilwoman? Good. You're good. Councilman Schenck? Just puts in effect what we've been looking for for the past year. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Good. Mr. Jones, I have a question if you don't mind. <coughs> yes, sir. John Jones, Little John Engineering Associates, uh, Orlando, Florida. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, just a quick question on what was approved by the, the voters. Now, this will apply to new construction, and it's a tax abatement on only the new construction or on the land and everything. The tax abatement only applies to new construction and applies to new equipment that is installed in the facility. It does not apply to land. What about land being brought into the city for this purpose? <coughs> it does not apply to land at all. Okay, good. That's all I need to know. Very good. Is that just because the way the the amendment was passed by the voters? No, that's the way the enabling uh, statutorial language was set up uh, for tax abatements. So you always have the underlying tax revenue associated with the land coming into the city or the county. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anything else from Council? Good. Hearing none, I'll call the question. Uh, the motion on the table is to adopt Ordinance Number 1575. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item number 10, first reading of ordinances. We have none this evening. Uh, resolutions. Item number 11 is resolution number 2727-13, authorizing issuance of the, of the limited ad valorem refunding note, series 2013. We'll let Brian explain that. You're right, Mr. Cobb. Thank you, Mayor. This is a request for the City Council to authorize a negotiated loan in an amount, in an aggregated principal amount, not to exceed $5,900,000 for the purpose of refunding a portion of the City's outstanding limited ad valorem bonds, Series 2003. The execution and delivery of a loan agreement, the execution and delivery of an escrow deposit agreement and appointment of the escrow agent, and the execution and delivery of a limited ad valorem refunding note, 2013. At its August 19th, 2013 regular meeting, the City Council awarded RFP number 13-12 for a bank-qualified tax-exempt limited ad valorem refunding note to TD Bank. The purpose of the refunding is to take advantage of interest rates, savings, and to pass those savings on to City residents in the form of a millage rate reduction in the general ob obligation debt. The refunding creates a reduction in the fiscal year 2013-14 proposed budget general obligation millage rate from 0 0.275 mills uh, of 0 0.275 mills from 0 0.3016 to 0 0.2741, which is approximately 9%. The city will save approximately $50,000 annually, $1,006,000 over the life of the loan, and $716,000 on a present value basis. The interest rate on the note is 3.425% and will be paid semi-annually on April 1st and October 1st, commencing April 1st, 2014, until the note is paid in full. It is recommended that City Council adopt Resolution Number 2727-13, and I want to let the Council know that Mr. Mark Galvin, our City's Financial Advisor, as well as Ms. Misty Taylor from uh, Bryant, Miller & Olive are both here tonight and are available to address questions. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. 
At this time, I do not have any request to speak forms on this item, so we will move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Motion to approve resolution number 2727-13. Second. The motion and a second. Councilman Shank, you have the floor. Good. You know what? Can keep saying thank you to you guys. You keep working hard to find these mm -hmm. ways for us to save and, and put this together. So we appreciate everything from all of you. Councilwoman? Yes, thank you. Down to my left. Ditto, ditto. Good. Definitely yeah, I mean, I, I mean, anytime you, Councilman Shank hit it, anytime you can go, I mean, we've really looked at everything this city has done now and refinanced it to lower stuff and, you know, to give the citizens back a little tax decrease on the bond is good. And, um, you know, we've really left no stone unturned and we've looked at everything. And I've always said through the years, are we done yet? And I think we're done. We got it where we want it. And it's, uh, it's all good. So thank you all for helping us out on that. We appreciate it. Great. I guess the question would be, Mr. Boop, why don't you come on up for a second? Why don't you come on up for a second? I have a question for you. Sorry. Deputy Mayor brought up a, a, a good point that you've been looking at a lot of these, but are we done or are there others that may be able to re refinance for savings? There are other opportunities um, that we're looking for. Uh, uh, next year we're done this year because we have reached our maximum amount that we can possibly refinance on our BQ status mm -hmm. the opportunity opens up again January 1st 2014 at that time we're going to be looking at the utility note that we, we weren't able to refinance this year okay nice that's a big one yes sir all right great thank you mr. Duke. all right all the bond council in the back just big smile on their face <laughs> when you say that. <laughs> January 1, they'll be yeah. at the first meeting. We're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, Bond Council and the finance guys, it's got a big grin. All righty. <clears throat> Motion on the table is to adopt resolution 27 and 27-13. 27 Does any member have anything else? I'm going to call the question then. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. No discussion items? Mr. Birthday Boy, you're up. Thank you, Mayor. I do have one item for you tonight. Uh, we were contacted by uh, representatives of the Avito Preservation Project. They are, we received a request whether or not we want to sponsor their annual calendar. Uh, we have done so in the past. Uh, they've given us uh, dates that different months this year, more than more months to uh, choose from. Uh, in the past, the city has donated $1,000 to the calendar. And um, this year, they've given us January, February, May, June, September, and November. Uh, last year, I believe we chose November because of its relationship to uh, Snow Mountain and the holidays. So I was just wondering if you wish to once again sponsor the top calendar. At the same. At the same. same. Council members, looking for consensus? Yes. That's good. Good, good, good. Good, good. You got it. Thank you. That's all I have for tonight. All right. Okay, Lonnie, I highlighted you on this thing. <coughs> Lonnie, do you have any report tonight? Well, since I'm highlighted, I need to say something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, you really are, Lonnie. But, no, the, I, I, I got to highlight that public comment one. No, the only thing I'd, I'd point out, just for information purposes, you, you know, from time to time, the chief and I talk to you about the status of the red light camera situation in the state of Florida. I guess I could. It came out today that the the chairman of the Florida Senate Transportation Committee, who has been a proponent, sort of, of red light cameras, has now stated today that he is going to seek the repeal yep. of the red light camera statute. So, come see, come saw, watch your legislature. What's his, what's, his, what's his reasoning for that? Did he give a reason why he Well, he said he was going to delay his final decision until the OP OPAGA, which is a study agency of the legislature uh, finished a study, but uh, if they didn't finish the study and he decided he'd state his opinion, so I don't know. <laughs> they just didn't answer you. What does that say, Lonnie, to cities that already have them in already? There's 76 jurisdictions, as I recall, that have them. Uh, they wouldn't have them, at least not under the statute. Wow. So, well, I mean, depending upon what the legislation says, ultimately, if it's passed, any way, it, it's just you know, local. 
local governments you know, are affected by the legislature, so you, you wow. must hmm. you wow. keep your eye on it. Just tell them to keep their hands off tornado sirens. <laughs> Don't worry about that. They're safe. That's all I have. That's all you have, Mr. Groot? Great. Uh, Mayor, could I, just, oh, Mr. could I add one little thing? I, and I must apologize for this. No uh, I would, I'd like to introduce Ms. Teresa Carrera, our new Development Services Director. <laughs> Brian, I already called her with a small issue today. So awesome. She, that's great. That's that's better than calling me. Yeah. <laughs> I got thrown right into the frying pan. Day one, you already get come on. <laughs> Thursday. I'm sorry, Teresa. You know, I, I was at the chamber lunch today with Councilman Shank, and you know these things come up. So uh, welcome. Great. Anything else, Mr. Cobb? No, sir. Thank you. All righty. Moving on to reports. Uh, I'm up first. I'll be brief. As I just mentioned, uh, Councilman Shank and I are at the. Uh, Oviedo Winter Springs Chamber luncheon today, and Wendy Brandon, CEO of uh, Central Florida Regional Hospital, put on a wonderful presentation of Oviedo ER and everything, all the amenities that it is going to have. And as we've said numerous times, uh, it is going to be a full service emergency room, just like at any hospital. So they're going to have trauma rooms. Uh, no, one trauma room, 12 patient rooms. If I miss anything, Councilman Schenck, jump in. Uh, lab, x-ray, um, a, psych, a psych ward. One of, no, one of the rooms will be for protective that, that you know, will have, no, will have the equipment shielded so that in case they need to protect somebody. Right. They'll, they'll, they'll have sort of like a psych room. If that's they'll be able to necessary. do virtually everything. Yeah. Virtually any, everything. Any, any emergency room can do. Yeah, and one of the interesting statistics that uh, Ms. Brandon presented to the audience was in all of their research uh, that they could gather from insurance companies and other hospital networks, the need is <coughs> emergency room here right now, not beds. Because well, it was like some 99% or something of yeah, that. that are for all that across all the hospitals, not just theirs, that transport from this area, that they're, they, they don't stay overnight, they're dismissed from the day. So it's a true emergency room situation versus having to check them into the hospital. That was like 90 something percent, 92 or 93 percent. Yeah, like it, was some, it was in the 90s. So, um, you know, it, 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 um, the audience that was there today numbered, there must have been 100, 110 people there for the luncheon today. And it was great to see everybody's eyes open up and realize how this is going to work and how the expansion will happen. And I think some of them were quite surprised at the amount of land that they have over there for expansion in the future. Uh, they also announced today the executive director for Oviedo ER, who is uh, Mrs. Janet Livingston. Janet's a 17-year resident of the city of Oviedo and most recently worked for RHS and at one point in time ran their level one trauma center for about two or three years. Uh, she has been hired on by Central Florida to run RER. So we are in great hands, and Chief White is nodding his head. Janet's son is one of our firefighters. Yes, he is. So um, uh, Janet's been is well respected, wouldn't you say, Chief? Yes. So uh, we are in good hands. Moving on, Chief, you've got your farmer's market on Saturday, correct? Eight to one? Eight to one. Hope to see everybody there. September 20th is the uh, always awaited football challenge cup. Drew, you got that cup ready to go? Bobby's not letting it go right now, right? It's still in the showcase. All righty. Well, hopefully we'll have it there for the game. Drew, is it 7 o'clock kickoff? Okay. You can send us out an email and just uh, let us know. And... Over the last couple of weeks, I did a few State of the Cities. Uh, the other night, I did one for the Lions Club over at uh, Twin Rivers Golf Course. And, you know, once again, as I report with all of these, once everybody sees the State of the City and kind of sees how it all, everything that we're doing fits together, you know, their eyes just really <coughs> light up. So um, <coughs> the State of the City, Robin, is out on the website, correct? So anybody who wants to go out there and look through it. Also, I saw a whole bunch of updates on Oviedo on the Park, uh, drawings, pictures, veterans tribute. Um, yeah, it's all right there. So if 
If anybody's interested, cityofobito.net. And that is the end of my report. Councilman Schenck. Uh, the mayor pretty much hit everything. I will add that the one thing that they, <clears throat> that Wendy also pushed um, was the turnaround time. Uh, they, they really keep track of that number, uh, how well, the, how quickly they release the EMS, how quickly they meet up with the EMS, how quickly they release the EMS. So for us, hopefully, we, you know, it puts our EMS guys back on the street. And A, because it's that much closer, um, but the turnaround time, the release time will be that much quicker. And having the paramedics and having units out in the street where they're needed versus <clears throat> spending time traveling to different hospitals and uh, waiting to get released uh, really adds to our level of service a great deal. So I think having that, having that ER right there will uh, also, they, they were very, that was one of the statistics that she knew and was very uh, proud to say, we know this, we track this, and this is a very important statistic for us. So we're happy to hear that. That's it. Thank you. And just to point out, what leadership class was Wendy Brandon from? Uh, the best, 20. <laughs> <laughs> 19. 19, well, thank you. Uh, Council, Deputy Mayor Hank. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, 16? 19. 19 16. was the best class, most accomplished. How many people were in class 16 in here? All right, we got a number of everyone else. Wait, wait, wait. 19, 19, 19. Who's I with in 19 for the city? Oh, I think I might have been all on my own. I was, wasn't I? Nice. All right, just a cu couple quick things. Lonnie, nice to see you back in your chair. We had some competent fill-ins with Miss Nix, so that was good. But good to see you back there. Um, Brian, happy birthday. Teresa, welcome aboard. And uh, I just want to uh, just, I like to do this. I know sometimes it embarrasses some people, but I just want to throw out some props to, to Robin because this girl for the last month since Catherine left, I, I have noticed, has stepped into just about every role that we asked and going just above and beyond and keeping it smooth, doing the budget, taking care of all these other things. So I just want you to know we all see it and greatly appreciate it. You've made our lives very easy. You made the lives of everybody around you easy. And, uh, you know, I really couldn't imagine without you with this transition. So props to Robin. It's a good day for Oviedo, and uh, that's the end of my report. Uh, Councilwoman Drago. No report. Wow. Football's on, right? Yes, yes, I got the message loud and clear. Councilor Britwood, just uh, real quick, we had a, a calendar meeting last night, and uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Magno uh, gave me a survey from the uh, Tourist Development Commission, and I'll pass it on to you, Brian. What they're looking for is a list of uh, events in each city, like uh, Taste of Oviedo, whatever, and they want to put that out in a, in a, uh, in a mailer or something online where tourists come to the, the county, they, they can go on there and, and see which events are going on in the county. So I'll pass that along to you. Um, and the only thing you have is a meeting tomorrow with Duke Energy with uh, Tricia Setzer, uh, which is a, an outcome of the, uh, the conference we had. She, she uh, rolled out a program they have for uh, providing energy efficient improvements to uh, homeowners. And, uh, selected neighborhoods that, that are uh, it's very much aligned with our ION program. So she's going to sit down and talk to me about that, and we're going to lop on a bunch of other subjects regarding street lights and, and other other issues with them. So they've come forward to work with us. Uh, so we're very happy about that. Could you add one thing to your agenda with sure. her tomorrow? Um, I, I was called today uh, by residents and the HOA of Black Hammock Preserve up off of Florida Avenue. Yep. And evidently, they're having an issue with uh, blackouts just in their neighborhood that range from two minutes to two hours. And it's only their neighborhood. They've had nine of them in the last uh, four or five months. They've called uh, Duke Energy. And you know, of course, Duke says they have to get the engineers out there. And they're not hearing back from anybody. If you wouldn't mind just bringing that up for me. OK. Thank you. Councilman Britton, are you going to talk to her about the uh, lights on Lockwood? We, we did a survey. Uh, Bobby had a couple guys survey the entire city. We wrote every single light down. Okay, good. Lockwood, we think, may, may be something other than light bulbs going out. So we'll yes. talk about that mm -hmm. and, and have them look at that, as well as the maintenance of the poles themselves. Because I think they've changed the light bulbs 
a few times, right, Bobby? And then you go down there and a lot of them are out. Yeah. So, yeah, they, it's probably I something don't, else. I guess I don't drive down my road. I don't, I don't see that many, but when I do, I, I try yeah. to come in. But, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got a, uh, they've been very responsive. Okay. Anything else, sir? That's it. All righty. Hold on a second. If I uh, hold on. Oh, okay, sure. I grab some. Um, we now that we're down the budget, um, I'd like to bring up a, a, an issue that uh, has been there, sitting around for a little while. <clears throat> and uh, you know, it's his birthday. It's a good time. I, I'd like us to look at when we're going to consider. Uh, Possibly taking off the interim tag on Mr. Cobb's uh, title or that option and what we want to do with that because I'm all in favor of the great job that Mr. Cobb has been doing. Our budget is done. We've now done our millage rate and I, I'd like to add that as a discussion and put that up on the table now. I can make it a motion if need be, but we don't make, we don't make no motions from this point, so unless we want to. Well, I, I'd like to add the discussion. Why don't, we, why don't we have a discussion? That's what we need to do. Let's start with Deputy Mayor. You got anything to add to that? Well, I uh, I agree wholeheartedly, Brian. You, you know, you've really done a great job, and you know, along uh, like I was saying with Robin, Brian, you've held it together. You've earned, you've earned it, in my view. I'm 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 ready. I was ready weeks ago. So, if Council wants to consent, I would I would approve. You're not impetuous, right, or anything like that? No, I just I don't I don't like statuses for anybody. <laughs> Anything to add, Councilman? Um, only that I I agree with uh, Councilman Schenk because when, when we started this process, we uh, spoke with Brian, and he wanted to go through the, the budget process. So that's uh, now is a good time to bring that up. But I, I think we we probably owe it to Brian to have a talk with him and find out what his his goals are and his plans are and what his uh, desires are. Having said that, I, I'm your advocate, Brian. If you want it, uh, uh, we'll, we'll advocate for that. Councilman? But I haven't had the conversation with you, so I want to I want to give you that opportunity, too. Thank you. Yes, I agree that it's important to hear what Brian has to say, um, whether or not he even wants to be permanent or not. Uh, I am still a, a believer in, in competition and putting it out for a bid, but Brian has done a a wonderful job. I was very impressed with several issues that he has dealt with. Um, so I'm uh, very impressed with him, and but I'd like to hear from him what he would like, if he would even like it. He may not even want to work for us. Well, Mr. Cobb and I have talked about this a long time, so Brian, you know how I feel. Yes, Mr. Groot, looks like you have some information. Well, no, I was just going to say that should you desire to move in that direction, perhaps the way to do it would be to ha allow Mr. Cobb to formulate the, or negotiate, if you will, uh, a potential city manager contract that could then be brought for you, before you, so that you could either act upon it favorably or not, or, or have a discussion about that particular document in front of you. Would it be the consensus of council for Mr. Groot and Mr. Cobb to have that conversation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cobb. Yes, sir. Would you like to be our city manager? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Have, the conversation. have the conversation then. Yes, Bring sir. Back to we us. will. Uh, 16th, uh, the first, whatever is most comfortable for everybody. Nice. Is that good with all of us? Yes. Great. All right. Good job. Anything else? Hearing none, future meeting dates. We have Monday, September 16th. Uh, we have two meetings on that Monday, guys. CRA starts at 6. Regular session is at 6.30. Monday, the September 23rd, we have a 5.30 p.m. work session. Mr. Cobb, what is the uh, topic of the 23rd work session? Land Development Code. Uh, September 23rd, yes, sir. Land Development Code. We uh, have the res we'll be bringing forward the results of our preference survey. Okay. And... Yeah, we're going to, it'll be wrapping up our series of work sessions on the Land Development Code. And then we'll also be bringing back, hopefully bringing back a, uh, the 
follow up on the impact the uh, smart growth proposal. Well, that, that, those are my favorite work sessions, so let's schedule that for about four hours. Okay. <laughs> no. Good answer. Actually, what you can do is you can schedule that work session to the mayor and Councilman Shank. The three of us, we're going on vacation. Okay. They can deal with all of that code well, stuff. I thought we would stagger it. Maybe have, like, uh, Mayor Mr. Shank at 5.30 to 7 and then let the rest of you come in at 7. <laughs> and Therese, right. Therese, don't let them get over on you now. You tell them how it's being done and that's it, you know? All righty. Monday, uh, a couple of more things to announce here uh, for future meeting dates. Monday, October 7th, uh, 6.30 p.m. regular session. Then Monday, October uh, 21st, we have a regular session. And as we can all see, work sessions are starting to drop off. Budget is over. LBC is over. So uh, we should get to a little bit more of a normal schedule. Before I hit the gavel, is there anything else? I'd just like to request that we get the agenda for the uh, CRA meeting a day early so I have time to review it because it's always a lengthy. Uh, <laughs>